Okay, so it's time for episode 15. Uh, this episode actually has a special place in my heart because I was actually part of um, Riding for the Disabled and in it we had blind people and people with low sight. Okay, in this episode I got a little help from a YouTuber called Mel's Blind Life. She is a blind equestrian and she's helped me out find some continuity errors and the things that might have not been correct in this episode. So she's helped me out with this because I really, as I'm not blind, I know nothing about being a blind horse rider. Um, so you might see myself correcting my past self and um, vice versa. On behalf of everyone from the Java School for the Blind and Vision Impaired, I'd like to thank you for letting us come and visit Pine Hollow. Right, kids? Well, you're in for a treat. Some of my students would like to introduce their horses to you. Hi, I'm Lisa. I'm Jenna. Don't worry, I didn't forget to introduce you. Jenna, meet Eddie. Okay, it is a little bit, you know, when working with people with disabilities, you know, they are disabled from the rest of the world, especially blind people. It is a bit rude to just grab someone's hand to start paying the horse. You know, the first question you would be asking is, would you like to pat him? You wouldn't immediately grab their hand and ask them to pat the horse because they can't see how big this horse is. They don't know what this horse looks like. Do they have scary teeth? You know, when you're blind, you don't know all this sort of thing. So it's important that, you know, you describe the horse to them first and don't just grab their hand and get them to pat the horse. I don't know. <laughs> Does he bite? <laughs> Eddie wouldn't hurt a fly. <laughs> that may be true, but in fight or flight situations, even the most gentle horses can attack and get aggressive and sometimes bite. Sometimes get a little nibbly as well. <laughs> Jenna, are you alright? Did he bite you? No, Mum, I'm fine. Really. Let me see your hand, honey. I wish parents wouldn't do that. Teach their kids to be fearful. Jenna's been doing so well and then Beth comes along and spoils things. Can't tell you how long it took us to talk her into letting Gemma come here. Well, to be fair, her mother is fearful for her child because she's lost one of her senses. She's vulnerable. Sight's probably one of the most valuable senses we can have. And to lose it, it's kind of scary. And for a mother to have to go through it, like we can only assume Jenna's lost her sight from a very young age, her mother's fearful for that. You know, I think Beth has every right to be fearful for her child. You no, know, she's only around children herself. How does she know that these girls are going to take care of her child? What's going on? <laughs> nice going, Stevie. You left your horse in the hands of a blind person. What if Belle got spooked? Why have you done that? No, keep holding Belle. Keep keeping your eyes on Belle. What you've done is really dangerous. Go back to that person. <laughs> Imagine never seeing a horse. You could still touch them and hear them, probably better than we can. I read that sometimes when you lose one of your senses, your other ones become stronger. I thought all people who were um, disabled in one way or another immediately had their senses upped. So, you know, if you were blind, you had amazing taste, you had amazing hearing, amazing feeling things, you knew exactly what you were feeling. Um, but that is not true at all, apparently. <laughs> um, it is true that sometimes you may hear things a lot better and whatnot, but it's not an automatic thing. Just because someone's blind doesn't mean their hearing is amazing or their touch is amazing or they can taste amazing foods. That is not true at all. Um, and it's not true if you are vision impaired or hearing. I can have amazing hearing. You know, I hear things from a mile away. I can remember things from miles away. I don't need to be impaired in any way for that to happen. And it's something I didn't realise at the time. But um, yes, it does happen, but it's not an automatic thing. So she's, blind people don't wake up every day and, you know, hear the farm animals crawling. Um, and it also does depend on how you lost your sight as well. Like if you were born blind, if you were born deaf, if you were born, you know, without taste, then that's going to be a lot different to someone who lost their sight in a car crash or lost their hearing um, in a factory because they didn't wear PPE. There are many different things of why that is the case. Yeah, it's not an automatic thing. Gina, it's your turn. 
Mm, may, maybe later. We've got to help her enjoy riding. You don't have to do anything. Like, if someone doesn't want to hop on a horse, you can't just force them to like a horse simply because you want to like a horse. For example, my school took us to a rev class. And I didn't enjoy it. And do you really think the instructor was like, we have to get her to enjoy rev class. Oh my God. No, that wasn't the case. I didn't like rev class. I still don't like rev class. You can't make me enjoy rev class. The same goes for this. You know, if someone doesn't want to ride a horse, you can't force them just because simply you want to ride a horse. Your teacher's letting other students ride. I'd like to try, but my mum says it's dangerous. It's in the ring. It's totally safe. Your mum's scared you'll get hurt, but that's not going to happen. Try. You can't guarantee that. Horses get spooked, things happen. You can't guarantee you're not going to get hurt. It may not be physically, but some people can get hurt emotionally, and people forget about that. They just assume unless it's physical, it's not hurting. You know, emotional can be considered as harmful as well. When did you start riding here, Jenna? I'm just here for the day, with my class. Oh. You mean the, um, class from the school for the, um... For the blind. This happens quite a bit. People think blind and deaf and cancer are all dirty words. And when they go, oh, oh, you're here because you, 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 you. It's like you can say blind. Blind people aren't going to get offensive if you say blind. Someone can come up to me being like, oh, you're the girl with the tumour. And I'm going to be like, yeah. I can't hide that fact. I have a tumour. You know, and people who are blind. At least the ones that I've met don't go around going like, oh, how dare you call me blind? How dare you say I'm here with the school for the blind? How dare you? They're not going to do that. They kind, they kind of want to encourage people to understand more about blindness. And they're not going to take it as an offence if you go, oh, we go here with the school for the blind, or how long have you been blind for? They're not going to take, they don't see blind as being a dirty word. <laughs> Believe me. Okay. Everything in 24 hours. Well, I got an A plus for my photography assignment in media studies. Bear in mind, this is for a primary school media studies. Grades are a lot different to the professional levels. <laughs> but take it as you will. <laughs> and Deborah's got that amazing new camera. And I'm free. Would you guys help me? I'd get Deborah to help you. You know, she's a journalist. She takes a lot of photos for her work. I'll be asking Deborah if she's free first. <laughs> well, we couldn't do it for nothing. We'd have to cover our time and stuff. Let's say five dollars. Right. An hour each. <clears throat> sure. Oh, back in the days with five dollars was a lot of money and my camera's about to die. <sighs> Oh my god, so I just went out to the shops while my camera was charging and it is freezing outside. Like, I feel like there should be a warning that says if you go outside, you will get frostbite. Oh my god, it's so cold. So I just um, put in a heat pack and yeah, forgive me for that. And it's, yeah, really, really cold. Um, but yeah, my camera's charged now and we will continue episode 15. Round, you won't find anything better. That is true. Um, camera people usually cost about a couple of hundred then you got your lighting your makeup artist all that you should be grateful they're asking for five dollars an hour <laughs> look who i found up at the gate thanks red i'll see you later jenna what are you doing here where's your mum actually she doesn't know i'm here she thinks i'm at the school library then how did you get here? I took a bus. Mum doesn't like me doing that by myself, but I just decided I wasn't going to let anything keep me from seeing you guys again. Or Eddie. <laughs> I... How'd she know that was Eddie? Okay, so Mel pointed this out. Um, she said uh, when Red brought her to Lisa, uh, she immediately knew who she was. She's like, no one said, you know, oh, this is Lisa. Um, I can think of this either two ways. Either she recognised Lisa's voice, or when Red came to get her, she said, can you take me to Lisa? Um, and that's the only thing I can think of because, you know, it'd just be weird that Red took her to the first girl he saw. In this horse will take me for a ride. Want me to show you how to tack him up? Definitely. <laughs> hey, that tickles. Jenna, I'm glad to see you. Just one of the chances that Eddie was by Prance's stall at that time. Like, why wasn't Eddie in his own stall or even in the pasture? 
Just what are the chances that Eddie was near Prancer at that time? <laughs> Okay, so this is one thing I wish I had pointed out because I didn't actually think of it at the time, but I did know it. Jenna shouldn't be riding a Shetland pony or a miniature pony, whatever he is. It would be like putting us on a bike that is too small for us. I don't know what they're trying to do. They're thinking, oh, she'll be safer on the ground. Uh, she'll be safer on a small horse that's closer to the ground. But in all sense of reality, Jenna would be safer on a horse of her own height. Um, so she should be riding a horse who is, you know, 13.3 or 14.3, whatever her height is. Um, and that's really important because she um, was one hurting Eddie's back and two only putting herself in danger. I'm looking. It's really important for disabled people to be riding a horse correctly. Um, so I think the girls really should have helped her out with riding Eddie properly, like having her heels proper in the saddle, in the stirrups, leaning the correct way forward. Very uh, When you learn riding for the disabled and all that, it's really important that they have their seating correct and that should anything happen there in a safe position. So yeah, she should really have been told, I guess, you know, the 13 girl, 13 year old girls, what do they know about helping disabled people? I mean, I was only 12 when I started riding for the disabled, but. In face so you pretty much hate riding, right? <laughs> it's so cool. I knew you'd like it once you got the hang of it. Horses are so amazing. I don't understand why everybody doesn't ride. You don't. Because horses are expensive and not everyone can afford them. Like Horses are a, the type of activity you can do in your backyard. You have to go to a special location and a special facility. It costs time. It costs money. <laughs> That's one of the big reasons why not everyone rides. And asking why not everyone rides could be like, why doesn't everyone drive a car? There are a lot of reasons. <laughs> and, you know, financial and time and all this goes into it. Yeah. A mother who doesn't like horse riding and is so against horse riding, I'm surprised she has jotties. When we had people come in for a one day off thing, they weren't wearing, wearing jotties, they were wearing like jeans and um, tight pants. They weren't wearing jotties if it was just a one off thing. So I'm surprised she has jodhpurs if she, her mother wasn't planning for her to ride on the day. Have you taken it yet? Christy, don't talk. I thought they would have been using like Deborah's camera that she got that she used in season one to take the picture of Stevie and Belle. If this is Deborah's brand new expensive camera, what does that make her job camera? We need more spark. That's the colour she's got on her lips. Why is she grossed out about it? That's the exact colour she's wearing. Now I'm not sure this colour suits you either. This is my favourite. Just because things are your favourite doesn't mean if you want to get modelling and acting jobs, you wear your favourite clothes. You gotta wear the clothes that suit your style, your shape, your colour, your eyes. Just because it's your favourite top doesn't mean it suits you and doesn't mean it's always the way to go. Uh oh. Angry adults at 12 o'clock. I wonder why Max didn't come get them early and kind of warn them look, get out of the ring now, get Jenna off that horse, she doesn't have permission. Why did he wait for the mum to come to be like, mm hmm? You, you know, he should just come earlier and be like, get off the horse, you don't have permission, get Eddie back to the stable. Why did he leave them unsupervised a bit longer and wait for the mum to come? You have a lot of explaining to do. What is Jenna doing on that horse? I told her she wasn't ready to ride yet. She wanted to learn and we've been supervising her the whole time. I hope you have a, like, working with children's check because unless you have that, that's not really a good enough excuse. Supervising. Well, you're only children yourselves. <sighs> Jenna's really good, Mrs. Elliot. Watch her. Jenna, please, get off me. <laughs> if you had your proper balance, you wouldn't have fallen off. Heels down. I remember my instructors would always call it bowling ball heels. I always had to imagine I had a bowling ball in my heel of my shoe. And I just remember them shouting out all the time, bowling ball heels, bowling ball heels. <laughs> and yeah, it, it helps you with your balance, keeping up straight. And yeah, if she had proper balance, she wouldn't have fallen off. Jenna! Jenna, Jenna! Sweetheart, are you uh, alright? Are you hurt? No, I'm fine. And like just going off 
anatomy and all that, usually your instinct is to fall face forward. Not all the time, I understand that. But every time I see them fall, they always land on their back. And in majority of cases, your instinct is to fall on your stomach because your hands to stop the fall. You'll find most falls happen face forward because your instinct is to get your hands to stop the fall. So I don't know why every time they fall, they always seem to be on their back because instinct wise, it's to be on the front. Oh, it's oh, there is not a chance in hell she got that from a fall. Like, her, her top is quite thick. There's no way that would have happened. Yeah! Hey boy, I got a crush on you. Hey boy. <laughs> and Red just bought all this clothing for his lunch break, you know. He just had all this stuff ready to go. I got a crush on you. I got a crush on you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, your free acting work is more important than your job that you're getting paid for mostly like and most likely doing overtime since Max is gone and there's a lot more to do sitting Drew is only there to business management uh, to do business management to the place. He's not doing all that extra work that he used to do that Max used to do. So you're working overtime but yet modeling is far more important in these girls' minds. I don't intend to let this matter rest here. Please sit down. This is a total lack of proper supervision. Beth. She's right. These forms are our problem for us to deal with. We shouldn't have fear in others. And you know what they say when you fall off a horse. I remember I was like so scared to get back on after my falls. And I remember my instructor telling me that you're not a good rider unless you've had a fall. I mean, how do you know, how do you learn from those falls if you don't have a fall? People are so scared to fail in life and so scared to not be good enough. But yet again, how do you know that you're going to fail? And how do you, in most cases, you do have to fail to rise above. Unfortunately, when it comes to horse riding, you have to have a fall. In fact, you have to have about 100 falls to be considered a good rider. You look at all these Olympic riders and you think they're just so perfect and so good, but they've had billions of falls. They probably had a fall yesterday. They'll continue to have fall. No one is a good rider unless you've had fall after fall after fall. You girls check the tack room. Yeah, she might be hiding in there. I'll be the first day to keep riding with the baby. Why are they going to the stables? Like, their tack isn't in the stable. It would make more sense to go to the tack room, get the tack, go into the stable. Like, you're just gonna go in there, stare at your horse and go, shit! I need my tack. Gotta go back out there now, like, you know, at least carry some form of tack in there. Because you, you're just going to make it that you're going to go in there and go straight out again. I always wonder how they get these grazes, cuts and bruises. Like, I've had many of those, as I've mentioned. But, like, n I've never seen cuts and grazes and bruises like the ones they're getting. What type of fall did you have? to get that small graze, but nothing else. And the horse, when I fell off, he came over to me. He stayed with me the whole time. We told you, you can always trust your horse. When I fell off once, my horse kept running. His name was a keeper, by the way, and if you knew a keeper, you'd understand why. Um, but yeah, he took off, I fell off, and he just kept running. And <laughs> This was back at our adjustment when we didn't have riding rings. So you were riding in the paddock with other horses. And like, I remember my poor instructor was literally riding down the end of the other paddock to get this horse. <laughs> because I'd just fallen off and she's like, I'll be right back. And she just had to run down to get the horse. It was so far away. And not all horses will stay with you. I mean, it's nice when they do. Yeah, I find when I fall, fell off, people would have to go get the horse. <laughs> because no horse wanted to stay with me. <laughs> That, that's great. Maybe we could go get something to eat and go see a movie. See, oh, I did it again. <laughs> no, you didn't. I go to movies all the time. I love listening to the stories. So when Liam said to Jenna, let's go watch a movie, and she goes, and, you know, I go to movies all the time. I just, you know, listen to the storyline. Mel has informed me, which I didn't actually know was a thing. You can get audio description sessions at the movie theatres, though possibly not as often in 2002 or whenever this was recorded. Jenna, you going for a hack? 
You said I could. Yeah, you dropped me off, don't you remember? <laughs> I'll see you at home. But don't be late for dinner. <laughs> you don't want to pick her up. <laughs> she still has her doubts. <laughs> She was waving at they can't see her <laughs> like you just be waving to thin air bye oh, another episode done and dusted if you did like this episode please give it a big thumbs up and also please do subscribe for more i want to thank mel for helping me out in this because you know like i said there's some things i got wrong there's something that she's going to know more than others because she is blind um but if you do have any questions for mel please use her at uh, youtube name that way she knows she's being tagged and she can answer your questions that'd be a big help because there's some things i can't answer and um big help for mel thank you so much for helping me out in this episode it's amazing thank you and please sign the petition that i have linked in the description box below i'm trying to get the unreleased music from season two and season three released as we all know <laughs> um but yes i will see you next time in the next episode bye guys